Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. Uh, today we will be covering Eric Adams. He is the mayor of the city that I'm in, who has recently been indicted. I am not necessarily clear as far as what is going on specifically. Um, I know what the charges are and you know, I just feel as though more proof needs to be pulled out. Uh, a lot of people seem to have been saying he's guilty, he's guilty, he's guilty um, without seeing or hearing both sides of the fence. He says he's innocent. Um, I'm neither here nor there on that situation. But I do recall when we had someone else who was running for governor uh, and Brian Benjamin, and he was brought up on false charges and everybody thought he was guilty. And now recently, um, everything came out and he's innocent. So that's why I'm not really quick to throw the book at anybody until I hear everything. Okay. But what I will do is I will revisit his housing plan that he had for the city. One of the things um, that made Eric, Mayor Eric Adams different is that from most of the other politicians in New York is that he actually sat down and spoke to people within the real estate industry. Normally that does not happen. Normally uh, the politicians here are pro-tenant. So they tend to only listen to what the tenants want, but they don't necessarily listen to um, other, the other side. So he did meet with real estate developers. And if I'm not mistaken, at one time, he was a residential broker himself. So he knows a little bit of something about the industry. Okay, so let me just go over his plans and... See, and, and the other thing is, is that these plans that he had uh, set out in 2022, he was about to push them forward. And it was like right before he did so, this is when the indictment charges come up. So, you know, there are some people that think that there might be some sort of conspiracy. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'll let you can be the judge. And also, I personally, I'm going to wait until there's more evidence. Okay, so what did he want to do when it came to housing in New York? Um, he actually created a blueprint, um, housing for the homeless, housing our neighbors. He wanted to streamline the process of obtaining and making and building affordable housing units by cutting out red tape and bureaucracy okay um, he wanted to update many of the zoning laws that we have to allow more housing development to go on that can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing okay but he wasn't really you know very specific as far as i'm concerned as far as what which zoning laws he wanted to change uh next he had some affordable housing goals where he his target was to create 500,000 new homes over the next decade. He wanted to focus on increasing affordable housing options across all five boroughs. When it came to homelessness, he wanted to improve the conditions of homeless shelters and increase resources for homeless New Yorkers. Let me tell you, homeless shelters, they're expensive. They're expensive to maintain. Um, it's expensive to even put people in them. It's actually cheaper to put them in a place to live. But that's another story. Anyway, uh, he wanted to expand the rental assistance programs that would actually help to prevent homelessness. Now, I know up here in New York, um, there have been time periods when they'll cut back on the rental assistance for low-income housing. So that um, 
probably would definitely help with homelessness in New York. He also wanted to preserve the existing housing that we already had. For example, we have something called NYCHA. New York has like the highest, I'm sorry, not the highest, the largest uh, number of projects in the entire United States. We probably have more than in the whole entire world. However, those properties need some serious repairs and some serious improvements. <laughs> I mean, they're from what I from the people that I know that live there, they're terrible. And you could even see um, even if you don't live in New York, I'm pretty sure some of you may have like looked at a few people who've done videos and placed them up here on YouTube. There was one lady that was doing that. I forgot her name. I don't really need to look at her videos anyway, because I already know people that live in the projects, believe it or not. Anyway. Uh, the next thing he wanted to do was protect rent-stabilized apartments and combat illegal evictions. Okay, so my thing is this. Almost every year or so, there's always some protest about stabilizing these apartments, but the rent goes up anyway. And one of the reasons why the rent goes up is because you do have some tenants that are destructive. And really, if we could separate, if the government would realize this and separate those that are destructive from those who aren't, that would actually keep rent at a more stabilized level easily. Secondly, you have the price of gas going up. That's another issue. And then lastly, you do have the price you do have taxes that are high. Um, are we as high as New Jersey? No, but it is still high. And when you have high taxes, you have no choice but to raise the rent. It, you, you have no choice at all. So this is why um, keeping or trying to protect rent stabilization is not the easiest thing in the world. Okay. The next thing is he wanted to adapt reuse, um, exploring converting unused office spaces into residential units, um, especially in light of changing work pa patterns due to the pandemic. Now, one of the things that he did that I didn't really care for is he started to say, oh, people need to go back to work, like physical work, physical work that we really could do at home. Um, but it appears that, you know, some companies, it just wasn't working out for them. So it was really better that they work at home. So now we have buildings where offices used to be. The offices are not there anymore, right? However, we have a shortage of housing, period, right? So instead of having these big, you know, floors of empty space, um, where offices might not return, in a way, it's better to convert those empty spaces into residential units. So I do agree with that. Okay, next, he wanted to strengthen and expand inclusionary zoning policies to ensure new developments to include affordable units. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of times, like, Many developers, they want to develop properties exclusively for middle income tenants or exclusively for luxury tenants. Now, um, what, he's, what he was trying to do was say, okay, a certain percentage of those apartments should be for somebody who's low income, you know? Even if you have to make those apartments smaller, even if you have to, let's say, downgrade on the appliances and everything else in that particular apartment, whatever building you're putting up, there should be maybe a few units, a certain percentage that is for low income, that's for middle income. That's basically what he was trying to do. Um, and... 
I know that there are some people that would not be happy with that at all. Even though the apartment wouldn't be as big, even though um, they wouldn't have the latest appliances, etc., etc., that could be where he got a lot of flack from. I, I can see that being a problem for some people because there are people who, and it's not necessarily racial, uh, sometimes it is, but there is classism that does exist let's not ignore this where there are some people that do not want to who are a certain way uh, have a certain amount of money they don't want to live next to people who don't have that money uh, they want to live in a particular type of neighborhood around a particular type of people and I'm gonna leave it at that okay all right next um, he says he wanted to emphasize working with communities to develop housing plans that meet local needs. Okay. He wanted to increase funding, increase capital funding for affordable housing development and preservation. He wanted to also increase supportive housing. And I mentioned that uh, before in another video. If you go into the supportive housing realm, it is the most you'll make the most money when it comes to when you compare it to other real estate investing um, but it does require the most work it, it's it's not really passive okay uh, next he wanted to uh, address fair housing housing discrimination promote more fair housing practices across the city that was his housing plan but because he is being indicted, um, I'm not sure how these plans are going to move forward, how things are going to play out. He, like I said, he claims he's innocent, um, but will he do what our previous governor did? Governor Cuomo stepped down because he said that if he were to, you know, fight the charge, it would cost the city, it would cost the state a whole lot of money. And the way that our state is, we need that money. So he said instead of fighting, he would just let it go. I don't know if Mayor Adams sees it that way. If he's going to step down or if he's going to keep trying, if he's going to keep pushing. I don't know. Um, what I do know, yes, I have met him. Do I know him personally? No, but I have met him on a number of different occasions. Um, when it came to, you know, my issue that I'm having right here is the fact that they have built too many drug addictive, uh, drug rehabilitation places here. And it's like, um, a lot of the people are coming from other states, coming into New York to be rehabilitated, and the states they come from don't have don't don't have no rehabilitation centers. So, uh, my thing and many of our na my neighbors, uh, we feel like that's not fair, and that he needs to do something about it. And we did address it, and he he apologized to us, and he said he would you know think about doing something. This was not too long ago. This was probably like, what, last year? So now, <laughs> with this situation happening, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure how this is going to play out, basically. And am I worried? Yes, I am worried. I am frustrated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go into to it too much um the only thing that i can do at this point is just pray pray for the best pray for the best outcome for all of us and that's it that's it and that's all i have for you guys um i hope the information that i've shared um has enlightened you because <laughs> this is quite different from what I normally do to a certain extent 
But anyway, guys, um, please feel free to share this amongst your friends. Remember, each one, reach one, teach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.